Property Graduate is the show for aspiring property developers and investors to win a life-changing opportunity that money can't buy. The prize is twofold, forming a property company with renowned property guru John Howard and owning 50% of the shares. John is one of the most experienced property developers and investors in the UK today. With almost four decades experience in the industry, he's been there and done that, having purchased and sold around 4,000 homes, apartments and developments. This savvy businessman is putting £1 million of his own money into the new company so the winner can buy and develop a property. With a 50% stake in it, they'll automatically receive a 50% share of the profit and potentially have John as a business partner for life. You're watching Property Graduate. Welcome to the fourth and final episode of The Property Graduate. In the first episode, we saw 20 hopefuls being interviewed eager to prove to John they should be his property graduate. The contestants came from far and wide and had varying degrees of experience in the property industry, but only 10 could go through to the second round, the challenge. In that stage, they were whittled down to three after a tough appraisal test where they had just one hour. In this episode, the final three contestants, that's Kimberly, Alfred and Eleanor, have been asked to prepare a potential property deal that is live and available to purchase, one they think could make a great investment. They have to present it to the panel, who will then pick the winner. The panel will make its decision based on who's performed the best across the whole competition. However, there can only be one property graduate. But first, let's find out how the contestants are feeling, starting with chartered accountant Kimberly. So Kimberly, here we are, judgment Hello. day. Hello. How are you feeling? I'm really excited. I, f I feel like I, I just can't wait to get in there now, um, run through my deal and yeah, just see where this goes. It's been ex such an exciting journey. I never thought I'd get this far, but I am. So yeah, I'm just looking forward to it. I can't wait now. Do you think you've got a strong investment plan, something that the panel are really going to be impressed by? It's not the most imaginative deals. Um, I was hoping to bring something a little bit more imaginative, but um, it's investable. It's, um, it's all about the numbers at the end of the day, and it's got the good numbers. And actually, as I was going through the due diligence, it was all kind of quite favourable, actually. Um, normally, you start to find out little uh, things that aren't so great, and actually, it was quite a good, a good proposition. So, you know, I'd be interested to see if they, they want to take it forward. So. Do you still think that you could be the right person to work with John? Yeah, I think it, we could work well together. I think we could get on pretty well. Um, you know, and I'm a safe pair of hands, you know, being an accountant, um, et cetera. And I think, you know, that's somebody that I think he um, could get along with, with and, and need in his business. Um, as it is a business, it's not just about property. So, so yeah, we'll see. How do you think you're going to cope if the panel asks you something that you're just not sure of and you, you've never experienced? Um, I think because he acknowledges that we're kind of earlier in our in our career than some I, you know I'm, I won't know all the answers but you know I just find the answers you know that's part of the journey um, is to you know work on it and and find the answers um, that we need to move forward and that's part of the mentorship that I really um, appreciate um, John's input if you win you can be one step closer to having a swimming pool <laughs> oh yeah definitely <laughs> I haven't really thought that far um, everything's been about today and focusing on the deals I haven't thought you know, what will happen um, if I do actually win. I guess that's when actually the real work will start. That's when, you know, I've got the financial backing, got the mentorship, um, you know, and the funding. So um, that's when, you know, it'll be right. If they want to invest in this deal, great, let's go. It's quite a quick deal. So we need to kind of move quite quickly or I'll be on the hunt for, for the next deal. Um, and yeah, but I try not to think too far ahead. <laughs> well, very good luck. I wish you all the Thank best. Thank you. Thank you very much. Despite being the youngest contestant in the competition, at just 22 years old, Alfred has impressed the panel throughout. Let's see how he's feeling. Alfie, here you are through to the final. How are you feeling? How are those nerves doing? It's, it's really exciting, but there is oh, it's obviously nerves to, uh, to comprehend with, but it, 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 we got to this stage, so it's, uh, it's a good, good, uh, good place to get to. I'm very happy. Do you think you've got a strong investment uh, opportunity for the panel? Yeah, very strong. I think they, they'd find it hard to resist, which I think is very good. But it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a good deal, definitely. 
You are the youngest candidate and you were certainly one of the youngest people to take part. Do you feel that that might hold you back, just maybe a lack of experience, or do you think that that's something that you, know, you can push forward? Um, I don't think it will really make much difference, really. I think most people that came here, they kind of had a bit of experience, but maybe not experience in the sort of projects that we'll be doing um, after winning this. But I've got, I've got some experience with projects under the way at the moment, so I don't think it will be an issue, really. I don't think age matters too much. But if it got to this stage, then clearly he sees something in me, so. Well, it's very exciting, and I really wish you the very best of luck. Thank and you. And I, I know I'm sure you'll keep smiling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And last to complete the trio is Eleanor, who has experience in both investment banking and property development. Eleanor, really well done to get this far. How are you feeling today? Good, excited, um, and really grateful, actually, to have made it this far. Do you think you've got a strong investment proposition? I do think so. And hopefully I've got a deal that is something that John hasn't actually come across before, which I think is something a bit unique, which isn't on many people's radar. So I'm hoping that that might be the, uh, the touch that wins it. You've got to know John a little bit throughout this process. Uh, is he still the guy that you think you could work with? Definitely, 100%. You know, I love the fact that he is open to um, opportunities in a variety. It's not, you know, he doesn't have one set strategy. For him, it's around looking at different areas, different deal types, and ultimately just the opportunity itself, which I think is, is really good and something that I would, you know, like to work more with. Are you, uh, are you positive? I'm a positive person generally, so, you know, for me, I just think all I can do is my best and hopefully that's enough. Really good luck. I'm sure it will go well. Thank you. It's time to see how our three finalists handle this last stage of the competition called The Deal. First up to pitch her potential project is Kimberly. So first today, the final. How exciting is that? Here we are. are. here for the final. It's come round so quick. Um, we've got Kimberly coming in and Kimberly's uh, bringing the deal in Wales, in Somerset. And actually, I know a bit about Wells because I did a deal in Glastonbury down the road from Wells and we stayed in the very nice ho hotel in Wells and it's got the smallest cathedral in the country. Who Beautiful is? cathedral. Wow. So I know exactly where this is. Fabulous. Be great to see what she's come up with. Yeah. Yeah. Kimberly, would you like to tell us about this deal that you've um, suggested that we have a look at? Yep, so um, it's a grade two property, grade two listed property um, in Wells in Somerset, uh, which is a very cute tourist um, kind of town at the bottom of the Mendip Hills. Um, so downstairs, the ground floor is quite a large floor plate, 340 square meters. It's already tenanted to quite a good blue chip for another seven years. There is a break in another couple of years mm -hmm. um, on that, um, paying eight to 5,000 um, a year. Um, rent already. Um, the upper floors are, there's two floors, um, about 200 square metres altogether, um, and there is already planning and listing um, builded consent to convert the two flats into four flats already. Um, so um, that's what this, this deal is about, just, just building out, not the most imaginative, I understand. It's on for auction at the next Allsop auction um, a week tomorrow, um, viewings Wednesday. Um, and um, yeah, so this is why um, I've selected this property. Um, so I've run the numbers. The guy price is 750 to 800. Um, so we can buy it for a million pounds. Uh, right on budget, John. Yeah. <laughs> Bang on, thankfully. Um, and we could spend about half a million on it, most of that being on the build, um, the rest of it on the finance costs and a few little bits and pieces on, on fees. Um, we should get, obviously, that like 85,000 for the couple of years on top. Um, to and I um, believe we can um, sell all of it for about 1.8 million GDV. So that's half a million profit. Um, and I think that should take about two years. Um, I've allowed for a little bit of extra time. What I liked about this deal is it's ready to go, um, ready to build out at the moment with um, planning. A few of the architects I've spoken to of late have just said six week project to take it at least six months to get through. So I quite like the fact that it's ready to go. We've got certainty of the mm -hmm. listing. Yeah. 
you know, I know that John, you like listed buildings. You seem to have a lot of juice in those. So I hope you won't be put off by a list a of buildings. Juice in those. That's a new term for me. <laughs> is that a trendy a new term? You can like believe, quote me it? if you yeah. want. Yeah, I'll quote you on that <laughs> next time. I use that terminology. Um, okay. And it's cash flow in, which you know I, okay. I, I like. And um, there's lots of options with it in the future should various exits, and it's in high demand. So that's why I liked this deal, even though it, it's quite simple in nature. You know but um, I quite like it. Well, Kimberly, thank you for bringing the deal to us. Um, who would like to start to analyse it? I'd I just like to ask, how many did you look at to come to this deal in the uh, last couple I, of weeks I, since I'm, we saw you? <laughs> I've probably looked, probably flicked through about 200. 200, <laughs> okay. Analyzed, so this is the best of those 200. Yeah, I analysed about 60 um, to the wow. next level, um, you know, doing like the how many can I get in there? Um, you know, I was down to about five minutes in the end, so I was getting pretty good at that. Oh, um, in, that's in John's league. And then I, t I took but about 10 to the next than, level. Better than the uh, the hour plus yes, some of them were doing definitely. it last time. Last, and then I took yeah. about 10 to like the next level, but I found a lot of problems. You know, there was restrictions on titles or it was under off already or, or whatever. So, so yes, um, this is, I think, all considered the best one, although I've got plenty of other leads. Um, for others um, yeah, and there's another it. one in this town actually which mm -hmm. I really like which you know um, might actually be a bit better because it's not as well marketed yeah you've got listed a whole load of them here so yeah, well yeah but on with, the, all, uh, with all right. due respect Kimberly I could do what you've done R write out a load of yeah no I appreciate are, it. I'm happy to send enough. the evidence um, you know it, I'm not really interested in things that aren't good enough did you visit the because I saw you made a note about talking to the store manager yeah I just phoned him up yeah. yeah, so I phoned the architect that did the planning. I spoke to um, the store manager, had a really nice chat <laughs> with him. Like, I was like, would you like to live there? And he's like, no. um, and um, I've also, I spoke to a number of agents in there, which is in the back and a few um, um, of the local um, contractors in the area. And one of the agents has actually been in this property about five years ago, which was helpful. So she gave me useful information. Mm. She said there was like, you yeah. know, birds are frequented and things like that. So I, you know, clearly the, the roof probably needs a bit of work. Um, so that's what I've deduced yeah. from it. Yeah, and you, and you asked the store manager how the business was doing. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I need to know that, right? Oh. Uh, need to, that, you know, that's yeah. the key thing. Is the covenant there? You know, it looks fine, but obviously the, the results that we've seen, you know, they were uh, March 20, right before COVID, although yeah. they only published them Feb 21. So there was a lot of information about what they'd done. Clearly, there was an unqualified audit report in there by EY saying they're going to last another 12 months. Mm. And they said they've done pretty well. It's been a bustling summer for them, you know, and actually with the staycations, they've actually fared pretty well in the time frame. And they've said the whole company's doing pretty well. So fingers crossed the covenant will last. It'll hold its value. Um, and if they do break in a couple of years, options to redevelop, mm. uh, options to get, you know, there's side entrance at the back to the rear of the shop. So, you know, you could split it off, have an office at the back, maybe do something else, get some resi. You know, I think there's a lot of options with this site. Mm. So who's the seller and why are they selling? Um, I'm trying to think if this is the same one as the one that I looked at. Um, I did speak to the architect about this um, and asked them, them their opinion. It, he did say um, there were a large property company um, that didn't take his advice um, on certain things. I assume that they have costed it up and perhaps at that time, two, three years ago, it m wasn't viable. So it's something to bear in mind. They've put it on an auction now. You know, um, maybe they didn't want to hold it. Maybe they're not mm. that type of company. I don't think he knew why no. they didn't want to hold it. Okay. So I think you, I, I, I won't accuse you of being lazy because that would be wrong. Okay. Ooh. Because <laughs> you are hard, I can tell you're hardworking. However, Thank you. You've done, you've all, you know, really you've, you've copped out a bit here by just going to an auction catalogue and going, well, that one will do. Uh, I, you know, that's what it appears to be. You've done an awful lot of research on it. I accept that, Kimberly, but actually, you know, I could find 20 deals like this and who knows whether they're any good or not cause, because, they, because they're in an auction. Yeah. Might go for four or 500,000 more than you think sometimes. You know, I've been to auctions in, <laughs> in the old days with my banker's cheque or whatever. And I haven't even got a bid on it. I haven't even got a bid because it's already gone for too much more than I was paying. I've driven 250 miles to get to the auction online a bit different now. I accept that. The John, reason, that you have to find a reason why they're selling. Okay. And you've told me, and I, I think I know the reason. I might be wrong, but I think I know the reason. They're a big property company, I, I expect, because they're using all sorts. So big, you know, they're big auctioneers. They've got a break clause in two years' time. Mm. That should have rung alarm bells completely with you. Because even if 
even if they want to stay there, the first thing they're going to do is reduce the price on it, reduce the rent on you. They're going to say, well, you know, we're not doing as well as we want, this, that and the other. We'll give you half the rent if you want us to stay, otherwise we're leaving. I, I, I think the property is, is good for redevelopment. But so that's I think what they'll that say. I, I on, appreciate that. I and on the rent that. of 80, 85,000, that's that would be valued at about 1.2 million if it was on a long lease. Yeah. So why do you think I'm wrong? Um, I think because we can do other things with the property, we can redevelop it. I think that would be our counter negotiation. Um, we target might on that. To, it's but, got. But I know it's got an upwards only rent review. But, but, I appreciate but, but at eighty five. But uh, the, the open the, the the rent review is irrelevant because there's a break clause, so they can walk away, and we're left with an empty property. No no rates because it's listed. To be yeah, fair. Yeah. Yeah. However, you know, un unless you're a lot better than me, and I hope you you are. How are you going to make more money than a, than eighty five grand pro rata eighty five grand a year out of two small shops in Wells? And I know Wells well because we did a deal in Glastonbury a few years ago um, conversion, and we used to stay at the very nice hotel in Wells. And it is a lovely, lovely town, by the way. You picked a beautiful town um, or city because it's got a I know, it cathedral. Yeah. So it is lovely, but but the reason for me this is on the market is because of the break clause. And I said, even if they're not in trouble, they're using it as a as a, a stick to beat landlords with. Uh, these tenants are, and it, reduce that, the rent. Is that not the the opportunity though? Well, that's why that's exactly what I think. The opportunity right. is because we can hold value. I, this is why I spoke to the store because they only started three years ago. Clearly, right. they did their research to say this is a really good town to be in. Kimberly, mm -hmm. they don't so, care. They're ruthless. These people. They yeah. are absolutely ruthless. Right. They'll they'll go and move across the road at another shop. That, that, that's half the rent. I mean, because I they can, of, because they can, and because they're powerful and they're they're bigger than, than we would ever be, and they're powerful. Um, and and I cannot see how you're going to redevelop that at the front to relet those shops at the front. You'll get half the rent they are now. Every high street has been cut in half the rents, so you only get half at the mo if you can get them let quickly, which I doubt. We'll get half the rent at the front, and then you've got some probably secondary type of some development out the back that doesn't look very nice because it's the back of shops. So I think you've done yourself a disservice today, Kimberly. Okay. I really do. Well, and it's a got, shame. If you've got half the size of shop at the front, if, you're, if your plan with this is development, then... And there is, you know, I, I, the viability of this, there is a lot of, it is a massive floor plate it with a bit of land at the back. Line. Yeah. So, you but, know, it, but, 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 but it's a listed building and that should, that should yes, alarm, a, I, you know, I listed building, that. you know, trying to get new build in, 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 the, in, 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 the, in the surroundings of listed building is very difficult. So really there's a number of, there's a number of things that shout at me that this deal is not, is not for me. Now that doesn't stop you winning the, sh the show uh, and, and it doesn't stop you working with me at all, Kimberly, but I think you should have brought a better deal into me today. And I, th I think it's absolutely fair. You know, I, um, the auction was my last point of call. Um, the other options that I had just either weren't me meeting the hurdle rate, or there were there were too no. many obstacles that that meant that it would just no. take too long. No. So I, it was no. the best of the crop. But, I understand um, that, and, yeah. and I and I completely understand why you did what you did. Mm. Um, I think yeah. even you've looked at sixty deals and you put a pack together that's an inch thick. I think lazy was a little bit harsh there, John. Uh, yes, I, no, I, I think it's fair. No, I, 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 I don't know. Easy, be, I think. Kimberly, to be fair, lazy was not the word. It was a, it's a lazy deal is what I'm trying to okay, say. Okay, okay, that okay. Y the effort you put into it is absolutely fine. Yeah. But the, the yeah. deal is lazy. You know, it's in an auction con okay. auction catalogue. Yeah. It's not difficult to just say, oh, I'll pick that one. It look, we can make it work if it's this pr this price. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I, mean, I, would I would never say you're lazy, Kimberly. And if you were lazy, you wouldn't be in the final. Yeah, so don't worry about that. I yeah. used the wrong word, and I apologise for that. We're not we're not looking for the for the the finished finished, you know, person are we? Person. Yeah. person. We're we're looking for we're looking for ambition. We're looking for aspiration and talent. Uh, and you've certainly got that in abundance. Absolutely. Um, so um, let's see how you get on. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you, the opportunity, Kimberly. all of you. Well, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Following Kimberly into the room is the ever-smiling Alfred, but will the panel wipe the smile off his face when he presents his property deal? Yeah, we're still smiling. He's still smiling. <laughs> we're still saying, will Alfred still be smiling? And will he be smiling at the end?
Who knows? Will you Who be knows? smiling? <laughs> well, will I be smiling? Quite right, too. So, Alfred, tell us about this deal. Uh, so what we've got here is uh, it's a property in Newbury. It's called Winchcombe House. Yep. It's a four-storey um, office building at the moment, currently tenanted by a music company. Yep. So what they do is on the ground floor, they've got a sort of a retail unit which they sell instruments by consultation on, and online. Then they've got two floors of sort of tuition rooms where they take students in, usually in the afternoons. And then the fourth floor, they've got a complete recording studio. So good oh, wow. soundproofing then. Yeah, really good. So there's that also the EPC is C because there's so much insulation in the building and it's all double glazed. And um, so, yeah, I'll come on to that in a moment. So in terms of, there's two, two schemes on this. Mm -hmm, one is mm -hmm. the uh, development scheme, seven flats, one beds, uh, with a GDV of 1.295. Um, and uh, the purchase price will be 520,000, and the spend on that strategy is 450, of which 300 is build cost. The rest is finance and stamp duties and stuff. So, Alfred, where did you find this? It's it's on market. It's been on market for two years, um, so it's through Estates Gazette. Two years. Yeah. Mm. So th the reason behind that is um, so it's. It's a strange one because it doesn't appeal to the developer. So the, mo the minute you pick up the phone to the agent, he says there's no development potential. And the reason he says that is because there's no parking with the building. But it's just uh, over the way from the train station and the bus station. And it's right in the centre of town. You'd love your agent to tell everyone that, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, I mean they're, they're, they're the perfect agents to buy off, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. For yeah. obvious reasons. Carry, yeah. sorry, yeah. Al. Even Al. the receptionist, the minute Carry you pick on. it up, she's like, no, there's no development. I'm like, yeah, okay. We'll they want to buy it. In the old days, they'd be buying it themselves. Yeah. But they're, they're not allowed to these days, yeah. are they? No. Okay. And obviously, the other, the other market's an investor market. It's got a tenant. Yeah. But the tenant's on a licence. There's no security of tenure. So you can't get a mortgage on it. So you'd have to negotiate the lease prior to buying it. So I don't think mm. it kind of fits those two markets. You've got to be creative to kind of find out which way to go for it. So there's also mm. an asset management well, Yeah, potential. exactly. Alfred, yeah. we can buy it. Yeah. <laughs> so don't worry about that. So in terms of the, <laughs> the asset management scheme, that's, uh, so they're on a license and we'll re-gear the lease 15 years, which they've decided, they've, um, we spoke briefly about that and they say that's kind of what they, they want to get out of it. They will go if they, if they have to and they've got no security. So they will, if if uh, if we wanted them out, they could go, and mm -hmm. the the property is being sold with vacant possession if required as well. Right. So what notice to the tenant? Uh, Twenty eight days in written notice. Mm -hmm. Great. So, uh, so wow. just the other thing on that is as well that the vendor is also sort of the tenant, and that the vendor is a partner company was a partner company of the music company, but that investor is now exited and that the investor is selling the building off. So there is kind of a, you can kind of negotiate between the two parties a bit. Mm. And they would have invested a lot in that building, putting that soundproof oh, exactly. yeah. and so on. It's at least capital allowance is written all over it. Yeah. Yeah. In your mind. Did you look at the <laughs> capital allowances? Yeah, I've had an estimate of 150,000 for it. Yeah, I right. saw that. Um, though I did see you were going to transfer them to, if, transfer them on. Yeah, if it was an asset management and um, we were to sell it onwards, then we, we wouldn't benefit from claiming the capital allowances because obviously it's phased over five years. So we would sell it if at auction with the kind of the note that there's there's a capital allowance report and yeah, you can claim yeah. this amount, yeah. which should help to achieve better value. So in terms uh, for the GD, and, and, and just say you yeah. hadn't budgeted for a capital allowance survey though in your it's it's things. sort of in the the legal survey fees of four oh, and a okay. half to five k. And um, well, in fact, it's they take a cut of the uh, the allowance, so there's no particular cost. It's kind of the benefit is the cost. Yeah, it's usually four percent or fifteen hundred pound mm. minimum. Okay. Um, so this 3,100 3, square foot, so it, it divides nicely into seven flats. You'll see in there there's a unit stack on how the floors lay out. And, and you put that number in, but is that net or gross? That, that's that net less foot? area. Oh, okay. So yeah, it would have been nice if you put that next to the oh, oh, square yeah. footage so it, yeah. mm. it was clear, because that can be 10, 15% difference. So. Yeah, so, th so that's excluding stairwell cores, lifts, and yeah. uh, all that sort of hallway space. Okay. So that's, that's the kind of usable space for the, for the flats. So that was the net figure, yeah, in here. But you've made you've made sure you use the gross figure in your co base cost calculation, yeah. So, so the, it's the lettable area. So that's kind of out. So it's the the area that's lettable is also what's the residential. Yeah. Sorry, I meant on the seven one bed flat option. Yeah. So that's costed at ninety six pounds per square foot on the net lettable area. Net lettable area. Okay. okay. Yep, that's okay. Uh, so it would be a straightforward class O application if the development was to take place. Obviously, if it's asset management, then we don't need to go through that. 
we would need to get that in before the end of the month, so that could be a bit, a bit tight. In terms of the sort of the building, it's, uh, it's very, very attractive building, as you can see, and it would convert quite nicely to residential mm. flats. And it's, it's ideally primed for, for the location that the that tenants, would, tenants or uh, owner occupiers would want. Is it, is it next to the traffic lights? It is, yes, it's on the corner. And what's the problem with that? Uh, lots of cars. But th this, that, that street's pedestrianised. So there's not so much traffic going on. No, there. it's just the traffic lights, you know, when, you, when they're all, we're all sat there. I know, they, that to be fair, it's less of a problem these days because mm. electric and also yeah. a lot of the modern cars switch off when they're at traffic. Yeah. So it isn't quite as bad as you, but, but it's all the start up and the, the fumes yeah, sure. and so on. But yeah. Not yeah. fabulous okay. for the ground floor flats, right? No, not no, fabulous sure, for the ground yeah. floor flats, no. Yeah. Um, in, so there's a lot of development going on in Newbury. There's around 700, 700 units in planning at the moment. Mm -hmm. But there are 650 of those are built to rent. So there's kind of a market for the, the build mm. to sell. Mm. Um, probably the, one of the exit strategies is to rent it, but I'm thinking that over the long term, that's going to be difficult when there's kind of new stock coming to market. And what's when the population of the area? Yeah. I think it's about 45,000. Okay. Mm. But there's, well, there's a Alfred, lot. Alfred, you shouldn't think you should know. Yeah, sure. One thing. I haven't in your and by the way, uh, this is all good work. Thank well you. done, congratulations. Yeah, got see a sensitivity why we, we analysis. See in why there. you're in the fine. I'm not Everything. sure about what a sensitivity report is, but anyway, <laughs> like I'm that. sure you'll teach me, me and what Fiona that like is. That bit. Helen and Fiona will teach me what that is at lunchtime. So, um, <laughs> yeah, we'll teach you how to be sensitive. <laughs> that's the one. Yeah, thank you. Um, so. You don't mention in any in here, none of this uh, you, do you mention about the help to buy scheme? That's uh, as the, in the afford unit stack and affordability, that's the 95% um, mortgages. That isn't help to buy? No, that's... Uh, that's, the, that's the government's um, yeah, sure. underwriting 95% mortgages. Mm. So you've missed the trick there. Okay. And it should be in here and it's not in here. Mm -hmm. And I'm disappointed that it's not in here. I want to know why it wasn't in there. I, it was. I, I considered that the ninety-five percent was the ninety-five percent mortgages was sufficient, but I'll look into that in the future. Over five units help to buy. Yeah. Excellent. Um, okay. Cool. Well, Alfred, thank you very much. Thank you. Go and relax. Yeah. I, and um, sure. we'll see you shortly. Okay. I'll, I'll also add that in the in the back is my kind of deals that I'm currently negotiating and discussing, mm -hmm. which if this one's not of interest, they're the kind of ones that I'm, I like and that I'm kind of working on. How many deals did you look at? Uh, I, I couldn't count, but those are, those are eight deals that 10, I'm- 10, 20? Oh, hundreds. 100? Yeah, constantly. Right. Um, one, one bit of advice. Yeah. Don't put your photograph in the back like that. You're okay. a good looking boy. Why you want to show yourself with a hat round the wrong way? You're looking <laughs> like a bank <laughs> You know, yeah, I, I want a partner that's going to look professional and smart. If sure. we have to go and see the bank manager, well, there isn't such a thing anymore, but you know what I mean? Yeah, a banker sure. of some sort. I hope you're not going to turn up like that. Okay, yeah. Understood. Okay, thank you. We'll see you later. You look great today. Thank you. Thanks, Alfie. Last up is Eleanor, who's ready to give it all she's got. Eleanor, welcome back. Thank you. Um, you've brought a whole bookload of deals, which um, I'll be delighted to talk to you about after, about, um, about after I should say. Um, but the idea was that you brought one. So which one do you want to? It's the one with the orange tab on the market. It's right, the... Leicester? Yes. Okay. Interesting, because that's not the one I'd have picked. But there we go. Ooh. So the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, so uh, I picked a deal which is one that uh, I thought it might be something that you've not come across before, which There's would be... There's not much I haven't come well, across that, before. That's ambitious, yeah. That's ambitious. Okay, so this is taking a lightweight industrial unit. Yeah. And rather than doing the knockdown rebuild, which is probably what most people would do, yeah. this is actually keeping the envelope and actually doing a part demolition through the centre to create a courtyard. And instead of building flats, this is actually to build terraced houses. So the courtyard in the middle, and then the houses would be on each side with them looking into the, um, the courtyard with a small garden in the rear, and then parking and cycle space. Um, effectively- But, but um, quite far from the parking though, so if you were in the back end of that development, yeah. you know, carrying your groceries to your house is gonna be a- a bit of a thing. So that's that's right. And, and and but it would be no different than if you did have a flat, then you probably mm. have to walk 
down or get a lift down. So that is actually one of the reasons why the GDV is marked down On the because of that. Okay. Yeah, because you don't have parking right by your door. Yeah. Um, so that's definitely mm -hmm. something that's been factored into. Um, so essentially it would be using um, permitted development, uh, MA, um, to, uh, um, to create those and then also um, a planning application to adjust the roof line. So what that would do is then just give you s some more volume without actually creating the, the floor space. And because you're um, uh, using the existing envelope, the build costs are not as high as if you did have to knock down and rebuild the, um, all of the, uh, the space. Let's go with the numbers. That's a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> so you're talking total construction costs and refurb costs of 1.25, and it's about a 10,000 square foot mm -hmm. build, right? So we're at 125 a square foot. I mean, you know, I, I take the point it's not kind of a complete demolition and rebuild. But is that realistic? Talk me through the thinking about that. So essentially, I worked on a basis of um, a thousand pounds a square meter, um, and because um, so you would build directly off the slab, you wouldn't actually need to create new foundations, um, and then um, essentially just kind of um, basically um, in terms of the build costs, that was like a quote that I'd had um, for for uh, that work. Is the strip out included in that as well? Yeah. And have you checked the, I mean, how would you check the foundations? So this is something that you would need to do prior to actually completing on the deal. You'd need to drill some holes um, to make sure that the, um, that the core is, is um, substantial. I mean, the problem is with these, these conversions is to try and make them look attractive is the problem. Um, and the other problem you have in an area like Leicester, and there's nothing wrong with Leicester, it's some, some nice areas of Leicester, is that the sell values are quite low in Leicester. And it's very hard to make these deals work because of the bill costs. I still think 125 pounds a square foot is light because you've got so much to do. You really have, um, apart from trying to make it look attractive. Um, it's difficult. They're a bit unusual. So they're gonna be, you know, little bungalowy type flat roofy things. For no one likes flat roofs for a number of reasons. One, because they don't look very nice. Two, because the roofs are always, always a problem with the flat roof. You know, so many people have got problems with flat roofs. So I, I think I would have tried to actually put some sort of um, gable end, you know, gable end or some sort of, to make them look more attractive. Because my, my concern is they're gonna look, they're gonna be the bottom end of the sell lab prices because of what they, how they look, however well, we, Nice, you make them inside. Mm -hmm. That would be my my that would be my issue. And of course, if you put a fault, if, if you have if you make a pitch roof on them, that's all more money. So then you go up to one fifty, one seventy five a foot. Yeah. And then if the resales are two fifty, it isn't worth doing. Increasing your margins. And, if, and the resales aren't going to be more than two fifty a foot, are they really? Because the average is the most is about two seventy in that area, isn't it? Two sixty. What's interesting is actually there's a lot of development um, going on right there now is. in Fleckney um, specifically. So yeah, um, there it is. seems and to be an area that yeah. Um, yeah. is in I mean, Leic Leicester itself is is on the up without yeah. question. So who's the seller and why are they selling? So they essentially are just using it as an office um, now, and they've had it for some time. They um, uh, put it on for seven fifty, but didn't really know them and the agent how to value it. So they've kind of put it on as a test. They haven't had offers anywhere near that that price and, and are open to conditional offers as well. They're not, you know, in a massive rush, they're just using it as an office. If they find the right, you know, the right person. Not in a rush. I never like I never like two things when I'm looking at a deal. <laughs> when I'm look when I'm look, looking at a deal. Uh, and that is when it says it's for sale or to let that means they're not bothered about selling or well it's or when people say they're not they're not in a rush they're not bothered you know they're not in a hurry and then all this unmotivated because seller. Um, unmotivated mm. seller virtually mm. impossible to deal with what well, wait sometimes waiting for the market to clip their well pop, exactly. you know, their price yeah I, I, move I, up to I, their I price it's it's difficult i think here um personally 
you would have been better. And I'm no, and I'm, I've, I've converted everything from a, from a, a water tower to, you know, pumping station to hotels, all sorts. There's not much I haven't converted, but I would struggle to convert that. And I think that sometimes, although it's possible, like we've said before, you can try too hard. Yeah, and I think work, yeah. a new build boy will come along and knock that down uh, and make a much nicer job of whatever we could do together with that. It would never look as nice as a new mm. build development. And it is in a residential area, um, but I can't see them paying anything like 750 for no. it. I did wonder when you no. looked at that, you know, did you consider knocking it down, yes. getting planning and then just selling it with planning? Yeah. So I did a mass report on it, which basically looks at a comparison yep. of all the planning applications that in the area and their, their steer was 10 flats and I looked at then the build costs for that and the build cost for 10 flats though was obviously a lot higher. Um, so I was kind of operating in a sense of one, trying to bring a different deal yeah, because absolutely. I wanted to do yeah. something that was a bit more unique no. yeah. uh, but also operating within the parameters that I'd been given. So all yeah. in it's kind of like keeping that, that two million budget and yeah. so it's you know I had a lot of other deals for example where you know lovely yeah. schemes 18 flats but the build costs were just too much so yeah. it was yeah. really just yeah. trying to bring yeah. something. No I know and yeah, I completely that, understand that and what I like about it you, you know you've done you're doing houses not yes. more more flats will you know there's so many flats about and i like the idea that that that, that you've done that they claim capital allowances you know on the building you're obsessed with these capital allowances, <laughs> aren't you? you have money. Learned, you have taught me something about them by the way it's money it's money, it's money. i appreciate that and we like profit on we the like profit we love profit show. we love profit my okay. extra profit yeah agreed my offer would go in with um capital out allowances so did you, so have you asked them if they've claimed I, it I haven't yet? asked if they've claimed it, but I don't think that they have. Yeah. But, um, and that might be the angle you're looking for on the mm. price, of course, a little bit. Mm -hmm. is that yeah. they, they want to perhaps a bit too much for it, really, mm. for what it is. Yeah. But on the other hand, if you've got some capital allowances. Well, I was going to say, it looks like if they hadn't claimed, there's quite a lot of fixtures and fittings. You know, mm. There could oh, be a yeah. very deep, they could be sitting on, mm. they could be sitting, there could be a, a de very decent capital allowances claim in here. You could claim that, potentially yeah. do a teardown. Uh, yeah. New build. Well, there is that as well. It, you know, there's there, there are angles to it. I, I just think that it's going to cost more, unfortunately, than what you've got in to do it. And and I know it's like a how long's a piece of string almost. Um, but I just think there's so much to do to make it attractive um, that that you have to build in a bit more, a bit more for the for the build cost. But yeah. listen, you've made a you've made a, a, a very good. Um, a very good case, I think. Um, I probably would have, you know, if you're bringing something to John, I probably would like to see a financial summary table, yeah. Just you know, a very showing contingencies, yeah. breakdown, net unit profit. breakdowns, net all profit. that net at profit. a glance. Net profit. Net profit. <laughs> the net profit is in there. I know it's in there. But we but don't I, want to have to like scramble, we had to scramble around to find, to find it. it. To find that, it. A summary page, you know. That's been a learning for me. So yeah. I, I, basically realised that but it was a bit too late unfortunately yeah. but I'll know so, for the next time don't listen you've done a good job super super well done, well done. Thank, thank you very much we'll see you later thank you thank you there you have it Kimberly Alfred and Eleanor have done all they can in the race to be crowned John Howard's property graduate 2021 and possible long-term business partner after the break we find out who the winner of this debut title is now the final three have pitched their deals to the panel, let's find out what John and his two associates, Helen and Fiona, think. Well, finally, we've seen all three pitches. Um, yeah. What do we think? Wow, it's been quite the process, hasn't it? It really has. You know, from the first round where they were all full of excitement and then round two, we had a few meltdowns, didn't we? We did have a few meltdowns. And very then... disappointing. Round two for me was very disappointing. Mm. Yeah. But it showed us who could look at who could stack a deal. Well, and who absolutely. Couldn't. Yeah, no, I agree. Well, that's it, and I think there were kind of two standout candidates from round two. Mm. But will they be the final two today? Mm. Well, we'll have to see, won't we? So why don't we start um, with Kimberly, who very nice lady, Kimberly. Um, what are we? I mean, what do you think today? What I like is the fact that they bought the deal to us, so they've had time to find mm. something. That, that that works for them and they've bought it they've had plenty of time your yep. time's not an excuse anymore about evaluating yeah. the deal no. 
And so they should have been bringing a great caliber of deals to us. And she did say she'd be viewed 200 deals, but the deal she bought us, it didn't stand out. Not really. I, I, not really. It Helen, didn't really. I yeah. think she'd done a lot of work in the background, mm. but I think maybe kind of where she is on her, you know, on her property journey, I think that that began to show. So I have to say, I was I was disappointed with Kimberly today, not because I don't think she's got some ability. Oh yeah, because she clearly has. Yeah, she's yeah, a yeah. very bright lady. Yeah. But I just thought she didn't do herself justice today with the deal she bought, and she should have. For me. She should have worked out that with a break clause in two years' time, with the high streets and the situation they're in, they, she should know that they're likely to drop the rent on the on the landlord by fifty percent probably. Yeah. And she didn't did it wasn't even mentioned. And I, I think, think that that's question. I think that question is who's the seller and why are they selling should have been where it should start us. For sure. And yeah. I think you, it was you always absolutely. You always want to know if you can find out why, 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 why it's on the market. And I think. I'm afraid today um, she didn't. She didn't do that. I wonder if she overstretched herself. She tried to do kind of too much and fit yeah, too much I in, so that, so that she's, impacted she's, the quality because yeah. she's she's hungry. She's driven. She's talented. She's she numerate. Is. But today wasn't her finest no, day. Wasn't <laughs> her finest day. Yeah. The thing is, the deal wasn't great. But Kimberly is great. Yes. yes. Can yeah. we count on her to take that any kind of feedback and, and go and if we, if she was picked and go and find the right deal for you? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I am. I have to say, I was surprised uh, at Kimberly today. Um, I think she's keen though, and she's willing to learn. I think she would run with it, but she might need more hand holding. Mm, more than I thought, actually, perhaps. Um, so that's Kimberly. Um, um, Alfred. The ever smiling Alfred. Still smiling. <laughs> Even after I told him that he should have worked out that the, um, you know, he, sh he, he should have worked out the, the help to buy scheme yep. and mentioned it in, in his appraisal, he's still smiling. Yeah. Um, Interesting. They all missed something, something today. Didn't yeah, they? they all missed yeah. something. Yeah. I liked his deal. I thought he analysed it well. Yeah. Uh, missed, missed a big thing on the help to buy, but. He'd also looked at two options and broke down both of those, yeah. which was good. Yeah. And he, he thinks outside the box and his preferred strategy, kind of the re-gearing, the asset mm. management, was again to me was it was the was the no brainer. Yeah. And and I like mm. the way his mind thinks. Mm. He mm. he wasn't thrown by anything we asked Not him. Not even Fiona could throw him <laughs> today. And she did try, didn't she? I did she? try. She did try. I mean a couple of a couple of those figures and stuff you queried him on and he came straight yeah. back with the answers. Yeah. Explain it, yeah. I don't know that that was a right though, the rounding, because it should really read clearly. Well, yeah. <laughs> Oh, but yeah. I didn't buy that. He even he... got the population right, just about. Yeah, I think that might have been a guess, mind you, but I don't know. So but he guessed he... well. He guessed well. I have to say, for me, he didn't stand out to me in round one. No. But he's improved through the rounds. I like, so so. I, I, I liked him in round one, I have to say. Um, yeah. And I still like him, but it's just whether or not he is, he's a bit young and, you know, has he fluked this deal? He looks okay. But we got the full story, you know, all the usual is, things that come out. Is he ready for it? Is, this is he the ready right for it as for well? Him? You know, because mm. there's a lot of pressure. Yeah. You know, and I help him as much as I can, but he's going to be on his own. He's on his own. You know, I'm not babysitting him. Yeah. I've got a big decision to make, haven't I, at the end of the day? Big decision. Um, and then we've got Eleanor. Um, Who came with four deals. <laughs> she came a bit of a show off. She <laughs> came with four deals. Um, <laughs> I don't think out of the four deals, she actually showed. She actually picked the best one to to no, show us. I'm not, I'm not, mm. I'm not, I'm not sure convinced of that. I think she went with the different angle. Yeah. I want to stand out angle rather than the yeah. this is the best deal angle. You know, sometimes the simplest deals are the best deals, mm. and she picked a deal to analyse that was actually quite complicated and not that attractive to do. Um, and there was another option with it, which be which was to knock it all down really. She'd also missed a few key things. She hadn't really done the seller background work particularly. She, you know, she said, I don't know to a couple of the questions. Yeah, yeah. but she was honest. Mm. And actually, yeah. uh, she didn't tell me off for giving her a, a bad, uh, a, a too simple a deal this time. Yes. Uh, that, that, that didn't show, <laughs> showcase her ability. 
um, because she had to bring her own deal. And actually, I'm not sure that deal showcased her ability either, to be honest with you. Mm. I think she's probably brighter um, and, uh, you know, and and of course, a lot more experience than the other two as well. So you've got to remember that. To be fair Mm, to them, she is more experienced. But I thought she came across very well. I thought she answered a lot of the questions um, relatively well. And... You know, she was a bit defensive last time, I thought, last round. Touch. Um, but this time, I don't think she was. Mm. The problem with, is always, you know, when in this situation, they can come and try too hard. Yes. And that you've got to take that into account a little bit. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Fiona. And I think, oh, definitely. Yeah. you know, there is a bit of that about her. Yeah. Uh, that they do try, perhaps trying a, a bit too hard. But can I, you know, can, Helen, can I work with her? And this is it. She's this, a very not, strong woman, you know, isn't she? We you like strong well, women. I, I, Look who you surround I love, yourself with. I love working with, with strong, strong, strong women <laughs> for a short period of time, but I'm not sure <laughs> if I could. Uh, Mind you, you know, we'll see. I mean, she is a she's a safe pair of hands. Very safe pair of hands. A very yeah. detailed, and she'd be great at running the project. Yes, yeah, she would. Um, but yeah, but exactly like you have to to gel and, and, and be able to work with this person, mm. whoever it is. I haven't made my mind up yet, and probably I should have done. Why don't you tell me who isn't going to be in my final two? Sure. For me, that's Eleanor. For me, I agree, Fiona, it's Eleanor. That's interesting. I'm not sure I agree with you two. That's quite brave of me to say that, isn't it? Um, <laughs> let's, let, well, let's get them in and I'm going to have to quickly uh, decide. Eleanor, Kimberly, Alfie. It's been a tough few weeks. There were 100 applicants, whittled down to 20, and here you are, the final three. You've had to come up with potential investments and strategies to show that they could turn a good profit. It's not been easy. Today, the panel has been robust in its comments to you. They've liked some of your ideas and they've questioned your motives in other areas, but there can only be one winner. So time to find out who the property graduate is. If you'd like to go through. It's been an absolute delight to watch all of you progress through the rounds and to understand you know, how you approach things and get to know you and see how you develop and your ideas and the way you think. Thank you so much. We've just enjoyed every minute with you. It's been so great to meet you. I've really enjoyed these last three rounds and today in particular, seeing the sort of deals that you guys like to to do and and find really interesting and have brought here today for John. And whatever happens going forward, I hope we can keep in touch uh, because I think you, the three of you have got such great futures in the property yeah. world. Yeah. That's a nice bit done. Now, um, the three of you brought very different deals today. And of course, it's, it, you know, they, they, these are just examples of deals that you hopefully can do or we can do. Um, however, I think all three of you missed a bit of a trick on each one, which is under, probably understandable. Uh, Eleanor, a little bit more surprise you 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 didn't get perhaps the bill cost right in my view but but we can argue, we could discuss that to be fair and you are a lot more experienced uh, and and you know uh, successful um already in the property world if you like so that's a little bit different for you kimberly i was disappointed today with the deal you finally brought us and what worries me is that you looked at 200 and you ended up with that um, Alfred, um, interesting deal you brought. Um, you didn't mention help to buy, which you know has helped 500,000 people so far get on the property ladder in the UK over the last few years. And whatever anyone says about the scheme, for every property developer, it is a godsend, a godsend. And disappointed that you didn't, you didn't reach that, mention that. But I've got to, I've got to uh, reduce the three to the two. And I'm going to do so by, unfortunately, Kimberly, asking you to leave. That's how ruthless I am. Three become two. So, Alfred, what concerns me about you partly is your age, because you're very young, um, very little life experience. However, I see your potential and your ambition, and I believe I can work with you. 
Eleanor. Very, very bright. Had an excellent career in banking already. Will have, if not already having, a great career in property development and investment. So do you really need help from me? Can I really work with you? Can we work together in the same way as I can work with Alfred? That's my dilemma. But I've made my decision and I'm going to go with youth against experience. Alfred, congratulations, you are the property graduate 2021. After receiving a huge number of applications and following three tough rounds, the ever jovial Alfred has just managed to outperform his fellow contestants to become the first ever property graduate and John's next business partner. Let's see what he has to say about winning this prestigious competition. Alfie, you only went and won it. <laughs> How are you feeling? Really, really excited to get started and get going with, with the, uh, the journey in a way. Did you think you'd be John's property graduate? Not at all. From the, the moment I applied, I thought that would be, it'd be fun to, to go through the process, but didn't expect it at all. What but are you feeling right now, though? <laughs> I, I don't know. It's quite, it hasn't sunk in at all. So it would take me a while to kind of register it and kind of uh, get my mind in set. Are you ready for 12 months hard work? I'm very ready, yes, indeed. Do you think you're going to have a lot to prove? Because John did say, you know, that you are young. Mm. You might be taking a risk. I, I still don't think age matters particularly. So I, I don't think that's going to be a big player. But I'm young and tenacious, so I'm full of energy. So I, I think it will be a benefit more than a, than a drawback. How are you going to celebrate? I haven't even thought about that yet. Didn't expect to be here, so <laughs> no plans yet. And what do you feel about winning against two other very strong competitors? They're, they're both, they, either of those could have just taken the win easily. It was, I must have been such a hard decision to make to, to choose the to choose myself as the, the candidate. So it's it must have been such a, a long, difficult, thought out process. We've been a gentleman throughout this process. You've been very humble and I really wish you the very best of luck for Thank the next you. 12 months. John, you've picked your property graduate, your first ever. How, is it, how does that feel? Well, I have and uh, I'm very proud of the person I've picked. Alfred, I think, is going to do a great job. Um, he might need to wear a tie from time to time, but apart from that, I think everything should be good. What was it about Alfie that just struck a chord with you? From the very first time I met him, I felt that there was someone I could really work with. Um, and interestingly, and I can tell you now, okay. Okay, <laughs> Helen, Helen um, and Fiona, I had to fight to get you in the top 10 okay. with them. Yeah. So it just shows you, but, but once you're in the top 10, they're super impressed with you. I saw something in you that they didn't. Now. Did you see a young John? <sighs> I saw a much brighter, much, much brighter young John, maybe, yes. Um, yes, but, 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 you know, you've got so many more attributes than, than I had at your age. So, I, I, you, yeah, the future is bright. Whether, yeah. you know, you find a deal in the next 12 months, we do or not, your future is bright. I, I'm confident that you will do. But your future is bright, whatever you do. Thank you. Do you think you've got what it takes to be John's next property graduate? Applications for Property Graduate 2022 are now open and you can apply today at propertygraduate.tv. Good luck and if you're good enough, we'll see you there.